Ready to go? Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. Chris is at the DA's um, yep. presentation. I'd like to I'd like to call the uh, January 23rd school committee meeting to order. Uh, do, can I have a motion? To Absolutely. Go? I move to open the public hearing on the FY21 budget. Second. Okay, so now the, the way this uh, is going to go is uh, this is for the public to uh, express uh, concerns or questions about the budget to the school committee. It's not a dialogue. Uh, it's, it's like a regular, but we'll take that uh, under advisement uh, prior to which for our vote, which will be on Monday night. And we'll just, we will discuss things that were brought to our attention about the budget tonight. So anybody who's would like to speak about the budget. Thank you. And if you can, you, we know who you are. You can just state your name and stuff for the record. Rebecca Lieberman, 50 Pratt Street. Uh, dear Superintendent Doherty, Ms. Kelly, uh, and members of the Reading School Committee, I urge you to restore funding for virtual high school VHS in the fiscal year 21 school budget. Reading used to offer VHS courses, but this opportunity was taken away in the fiscal year 19 budget and never brought back, even after the override passed. VHS courses can provide a huge benefit for students at very little cost. They allow students to take classes that otherwise would not fit into their schedules or that are not offered at RMHS. VHS courses can also be very helpful for students dealing with chronic illnesses, social emotional issues, or who need to be out of school for a period of time for any other reason. In fact, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education suggests uh, that schools increase their offerings in advanced coursework, and it's in our district improvement plan also to increase AP class access. And uh, when there's only one section of an AP class offered without the VHS option, it's very difficult for a student to take that AP class, impossible in fact. And this definitely affected my kids. One of my kids definitely benefited from the VHS option for that very reason. In addition, bringing back VHS would allow our district to resume offering Algebra 1 in seventh grade to those students who need that extra challenge, followed by a virtual high school Algebra 2. This pathway used to be available in our district until uh, the 2012-13 school year, and many other districts still offer seventh grade algebra for students who are ready, and we should as well. And uh, the other uh, two budget concerns I have, uh, the curric after uh, seven years after the implementation of the new math pathways, we still do not have math curriculum guides for all courses from K through 12. Is there any funding we could put at this problem to get this done? And if so, please do so. And the other funding comments I have is, could we please make sure that every student has a physical textbook for math. I've uh, been hearing that, uh, that some courses it's just online or there's one copy in the classroom. That's really not good for someone who's struggling in math. Uh, a physical textbook is, uh, is, there's no substitute for a physical textbook. So I would appreciate it if you would consider the, the uh, budget. And the last, um, the last comment I have is that you're uh, doing some kind of middle school math pilot and if we could get a cost breakdown of what that's costing us, which, uh, which curriculum we've chosen, why we've chosen it, and how much it's going to cost us in terms of curriculum materials, and does that come with a physical textbook? And if not, is there a way to make sure that happens? Thank you so much, and I'll see you again at the regular public comment. Thank you. Anyone else? it okay seeing none um, move to close the public hearing on the FY 21 budget second second all those in favor six zero okay now we will uh, go into our regular agenda and uh, we'll now hear public comment for anything that's not on the agenda <laughs> Ms. Lieberman did you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, I was 
I've been up here many times to ask for a math update. So I'm going to give you a couple of figures that uh, can help hopefully demonstrate why I think this is so urgent. Uh, Parker students are doing much worse than Coolidge. Uh, in math, uh, Parker eighth graders, 41% of them did not meet expectations in math, and that's compared to 23% in Coolidge. That's unacceptable, and we need to find out why that is happening and what, uh, what steps are being taken to address that. Uh, also, we have been seeing declining math achievement overall in our district. Uh, the 2015 to 17 MCAS scores, which I have right here, but it's very tiny, you won't be able to see it, but it's directly from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed website. And you can just see, this is students overall, the uh, Parker, uh, the Parker achievement is, is very, very alarming. And uh, in addition, our district restricts access to algebra in middle school to more students than most other districts. We need to find a way to make a pathway for more students to access middle school algebra and have a straight path to high school AP calculus without having to double up on math courses. Think about what doubling up on high school math courses actually means. These, uh, behind every point in these graphs is a student who is maybe struggling to keep up in math. That's why they weren't in the top track to begin with. And the only way for that student to get to calculus in high school is to double up on math courses, either in ninth grade, 10th grade, or 11th grade. And uh, who needs calculus? Uh, AP calculus is expected for all selective colleges. It's uh, expected for most uh, engineering, physics, uh, and math programs uh, in secondary education. Uh, I mean, in, uh, in higher education, I should say. And uh, it's also, you might not realize this, it's necessary for pre-meds as well. And uh, the other problem with doubling up is that it requires a student to know what they might want to do. And why should a ninth grader have to know already that they need to double up on math. What if they take physics in 11th grade and love it? It's already too late to access calculus for a non-top track student. And, uh, and finally, it just, uh, it, it's an issue of fairness and equity. Uh, we talk a lot about our high needs subgroup, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about uh, the students in the middle, which is the majority of them and students at the high end. So uh, I have proposed several times, there are other ways to do this. Uh, you you uh, can check out some of the other district websites and see how they're doing it. But I had suggested maybe a slower paced math seven, eight course for seventh graders who are not in the top track, but, uh, but would like to be able to access algebra, followed by a slower paced algebra one, followed by a geometry course in ninth for them that picks up the remaining Algebra 1 topics, and then they're caught up in case they would like to have a straight path to calculus. Um, I've asked many times about this math update, but I just want to uh, reiterate how important this is with the disparities between Parker and Coolidge, with the declining achievement scores, and with all the changes taking place. We're adopting, apparently, a new middle school math curriculum. Uh, we have uh, combined different levels of students in the same math classes. We need to find out how this is working, do some serious evaluation. Uh, and if there's something that needs to be fixed, we need to fix it. Or if, it, if it's not working at all, then we need to rethink. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to the consent agenda. Yep, move to approve the consent agenda. A second. A second. <coughs> a couple so, questions first. Okay, there was a second? I did, yeah. Mr. White. Okay, so just a couple of quick questions, and maybe Dr. Gordy, you can help clarify real quick. Um, on the first one, which is the uh, Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. um, number eight, and I think it even refers to it later, it says former teachers. Um, do we normally send former teachers? That's, that's uh, yes. Yes. Do. Yep. And, and, and as long as we have a Reading Public School 
employee as the, as the lead chaperone. The lead. Yes. Okay. Um, and then further on in number 21 on that same thing, it says, and seniors would get first priority. Will we clarify if that's upcoming seniors or outgoing seniors? No, not outgoing seniors. Upcoming it's seniors. It's upcoming seniors, yeah. Okay. And then that was, that was the question, so thank you. So are you okay leaving that? Yep. In? Anything else? All those in favor? Zero. Thank you. Okay, now we'll uh, have reports. Uh, Dr. Stice, how are you? I'm well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a report this week. No report. Dr. No reports. Mr. Y. I guess I'll cover as briefly as I can some of the select board updates. Um, I think the, the biggest one that came out of the select board update that is likely to impact us and either this year or next year um, is the notification that was given during that meeting that uh, RMLD will be cutting the dividend um, to uh, the town of Reading um, by approximately $500,000, although it could range a little bit. Um, I think actually one of the select board meeting members is at the RMLD meeting right now as we speak, talking about that a little bit. Two of them. Did Vanessa make it too? Okay. I knew Mark was going, but Vanessa was unsure as of Tuesday. So um, to ask about that and, and maybe follow up a little bit, that's supposed to be effective as of FY22 as it stands right now. Um, but that's a pretty significant adjustment. Um, We'll see if that impacts FY21 in terms of a step down or anything else like that. We don't yet know the answer to that question, um, but that's something for us to be aware of as it does impact um, budget-related information. Can I ask a clarification on that? Sure. I was told that it wasn't definite yet, that it's, a, uh, it's being considered, but it wasn't definite yet. A vote has not been taken. A vote yet. has not been taken, but the interest has been, and I think the vote's happening tonight. It's on the agenda for tonight. So it might, by the time this meeting's over, it might be official unless it's renegotiated. But it sounded like it was more or less set in the way it was presented. But hopefully we can reverse that or have further negotiations and conversations therein. Um, but that could have pretty decent impact overall. Um, maybe less directly appropriate to us, but there was quite a bit of public comment um, about the building that's formerly known as the Daniel House. Um, you know, there was some concern raised by some of the residents in that, in that area, and there is uh, a meeting that's coming up at the library on the 30th of this month. Um, if anybody's interested or impacted directly by that, um, that's something to be aware of. Um, and then there was uh, quite a bit of good presentation with regards to, actually one other thing, a budget note, and maybe Ms. Dowd knows even more about this, but it sounds like we uh, sold a set of debt um, that came in at a very, very advantageous rate of 1.06% because of Reading's AAA rating. That included in that debt that's impacting to us is the debt for the, uh, uh, the Turf 2 um, related space. So uh, that, was in, that was security, Turf 2, and one other thing that I'm missing, but overall it came in at a very advantageous rate for Reading. Um, they essentially paid us more than we asked for. So that was nice. Um, and then secure, the, there was the security update as well that was given, if you haven't read it i would recommend that you go watch that video it was very informative um mr lasher gave the presentation but dr doherty and most of the school committee was there too to, to hear it and see it and we didn't have anything to add so it was very informative in that regard um so if anybody's still interested in that please go read or go watch and then there was some economic update related information that ultimately will help drive more revenue in the long run hopefully um, that will help us maybe close some of the other gap we just mentioned so that's the quick update Borowski? No. Dr. Doxter. I do. Um, so RCTV, I raced over there after the select board meeting and um, got a summary of what they'd done before and, and was there for the last part of the meeting. It was really great to see Alex Ferreira and Michael McLaughlin, two of our students from RMHS there at the meeting, so actively involved in it. Um, the agenda included a huge thank you to the Rotary for their generous donation for all that the RCTB does for the town, including but not limited to the coverage of the street fair and other events like the Taste of Metro North. So it's two great groups working together and the Rotary was giving back to RCTV. Um, 
Also discussed was the current and next year's budget. They updated FY20 because Comcast and Verizon came in a bit higher than expected. Those are always nice surprises. Um, and confirmed, revoted the previous meeting's vote for FY21's budget. Um, the new the new business reflects RCTV's constant focus on helping our community. They're working to establish a weekend food drive, probably during May or June, to support the children and families that are supported during the school year um, because kids get their food here at the schools and then they go home for the summer and they don't have the same source of nutrition. So they're talking about organizing a food drive. Um, and the food will be given to specific charities who have this mission. And Stephanie Johnson from Reading Cooperative Bank, who's on the board, uh, the RCTV board, will be researching the charities to be giving that to. I thought that was really exciting. RCTV. And when they do these programs, they're helping the community and they're also bringing people in so that people learn about what RCTV offers and how they can get involved. RCTV is also considering for the fall a way for high school students to lead programs helping people in the community to use technology. Again, giving back but bringing people in through the doors. Um, they're setting up, they're thinking about setting up stations where students can demonstrate what they're learning in their classes here at the high school, like video editing and how to use technology that's available at RCTV, at school, and at home. People can bring their mysterious devices and get some help with it. Their goal is to bring more folks into RCTV, thus educating the community about RCTV as a resource and a worthwhile organization to invest in. Um, after recording the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration at the PAC, they're now gearing up for election coverage. Um, so this year, instead of doing candidate statements, they are doing interviews with school committee and select board candidates. Um, and they're not part of, in the past, they were part of a regular program, but this is not going to be part of that regular program. This is going to be something different. Um, the candidate forums, stay tuned, are on February 13th, and there will again be election coverage to count on. So that was um, RCTV, and I'm sort of assuming that... Um, Ms. Kelly might be doing something about the Martin Luther King Day event or um, the, the um, most likely to succeed event. Is anybody going to talk about that? No. So in a nutshell, <laughs> I felt really privileged to be able to attend Friday's professional development um, where we watched together all the teachers um, watched the most likely to succeed movie, and I understand that the um, vision of the graduate group watched it last night as well at their meeting. Um, and just in a nutshell, I thought that the movie was quite enlightening. They talk about a high school that's approaching education in a more process-oriented way. Um, and then very much a part of the importance of this program was that all the staff divided up and went for discussion in smaller groups about, and they were asked three questions that are all going to be part of the data for the vision of the graduate and to promote um, discussions. And they included what are the hopes, aspirations, and dreams that our community has for our young people? What are the skills and habits of mind that our children need for success in this rapidly changing and complex world, which was really captured in the movie as well? And what are the implications for the learning experiences we provide in our school system? So I was just really glad to be a part of the group watching the movie and the discussion afterwards. There's good things happening in our district, and I hope people uh, pay attention to that. And the other is just a shout out to our school groups. Um, who participated in our administration that were present at the Martin Luther King Day event that was organized by the Human Relations Advisory Committee. Um, with very few hands, I think they put on one of the most stellar celebrations that they've done in years. And um, it was very thought-provoking. Many thanks to Grant Hightower for his um, version of his own dream 
that we all play a very important role in, not waiting for other people to make the difference, but participating in making the difference with each other. Um, our school chorus and um, the clergy choir that was first formed this year for this event. Um, the speakers, we had two speakers, um, Kimma Hall and Grace Brenner, who did, um, Grace wrote her own poem, which was quite moving, and Kimma brought in quotes from Martin Luther King from Love Your Enemies. And I just, I can't count how many times the tears started during this celebration. I, and um, there was also um, parents of students and past chairs of the Reading Human Relations, um, Human Relations Advisory Committee who also spoke Lori Hoden and Monique Ganaratarium. Um, forgive me, Monique, I kill your name every time I say it. Um, I, did I did it good? Yeah. <laughs> but they spoke as well. So it was just a really, um, I'm so glad to spend my Martin Luther King Day mornings that way. And thank you to Freedom Gluten Free Donuts. Um, we had enough gluten-free donuts that were soy-free, dairy-free, nut-free for everybody, anybody that wanted them, and they were delicious. And Honeydew Donuts and um, Reading Cooperative Bank, who provided the waters. Um, Honeydew provided the coffee and dew drops. So it takes a community to do these things. So many thanks to everyone that made that possible. Can I just give one more shout out? So um, for those of you who, ha who were able to attend, we do booths in the hall, and we had our Parker and our Coolidge teams there, um, a world of difference groups, really uh, promoting that vision of peace. Um, and um, we're so thankful to have a world of difference in our schools. Both Parker, Coolidge, and the high school all have um, pretty active membership. Uh, they just went to the training again, and. Um, it's exciting to see them, as well as the uh, Gay Straight uh, Club was yes. also in attendance. So um, gave out some nice rainbow pins. So it's really, that, that event has really, I think, blossomed not just a day to commemorate and respect the words of Martin Luther King so that that message lives on, but really, uh, as a community, to, to really say that we don't stand for any hatred of any kind. Um, and I'm, I'm proud to be part of that, too. So congratulations to the... Um, Josh Goldblust, uh, who was the chair of the Human Rights Advisory Council, who did, as you said, an amazing job. I was so impressed. Uh, it really was, it was one of the better ones. Um, they were always great, but I think the kids' involvement for me made it really special. It was. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thanks to the Chronicle also for advertising it. Last minute, like getting the word out. You good? Thank you. I am done now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no reports. A <laughs> uh, couple updates from the rec committee. Um, the Birch Meadow subcommittee has been disbanded. They're now doing a Birch Meadow working group, um, which is more towards the town employees. Um, I think Mr. Huggins is going to be on it, and somebody from the school committee is going to be on it. Uh, not school committee, but the, um, the school is going to be on it. I think they're asking Mr. Zaya to join. Um, big topic, Sunday hours for nope. athletics is yet again coming up for the morning. Um, as spring approaches, it's going to come fast and furious. And then I want to give a quick shout out to Ms. Dowd and Mr. Huggins for all the work they did with Turf 2. Um, bringing that project in under budget um, with the results that happened is an amazing job. Yes. Can I say one more? Sorry, the ad hoc human rights organization. We are going to meet on January 30th yep. at 7.30. Yeah. 7 or 7.30, sorry, in the town hall. And it's an open meeting, so anybody and everybody is welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the, thank you. Next uh, item 7.30. On. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is that everyone got the uh, questions uh, this afternoon uh, and then there's a paper copy. Uh, I don't 
think the intent was to go through every no. uh, question. Be here a few hours uh, if we did that. It was for <laughs> uh, people to, to look at and prepare for for uh, Monday night. Uh, and I guess also if there's any additional questions that anybody might have about the budget. You can ask that now. The only, yes. um, similar to what we've done last year, we attempted to group the questions by, if they were general questions, by cost center, and then within cost center, if we got similar questions, we did list all the questions, but we did group them, and you may see cross-references. If we've answered a question, we may just refer you to that rather than being completely repetitive. So we did take that feedback from last year and incorporated it and tried to streamline it a little bit more this year. It, the other thing I'd add is since you just got these, if you want to, we won't go right into Monday night and vote. If you have follow-up questions or concerns about things that after you've had time to review them, uh, we'll dedicate the beginning of the meeting to do that on Monday night. Yes. Can I ask a quick question? Um, so I've had some conversations with folks in the community about the budget and people have been paying attention to the meetings and whatnot. My question, I guess, is more for Dr. Doherty and Ms. Dowd. Um, have you heard any particular feedback or trends of questions you're getting from the community that, you, that aren't reflected in these questions? Or do they feel like, yep, people in the school committee asked that, or did you hear, is, is there anything that you've heard, and, and I actually might throw this out to fellow committee members, anything that you've heard that isn't reflective in these questions? I feel the questions were reflective, and if we were hearing anything, the answers tried to weave in. If we added, we may have answered more than the question based upon anticipating. If it didn't yeah. ask exactly what we were hearing, we tried to expand, flow that through as well to expand on the answer based on what we were. This hearing. went through a very rigorous editing process <laughs> over the last week. <laughs> it's not short. <laughs> so these these. Questions will become part of the, the school committee budget Correct. document. Yes, yeah. yes. We'll actually we'll post these tomorrow on the website and blog, and so they have. And it'll be in the packet too for Monday night. We'll put them in the packet too. And when we submit this to finance committee, these questions will right. be submitted as part of it, so that while they're formulating any thoughts or questions they have, they can refer to. Ideally, they can refer to these questions. Did you have something? I haven't checked today, but last time I checked, we haven't posted the presentations that you guys prepared as part of this to the website. Can we do that as well? Yep. I have it. I have a no one over Send us an email, to, I think, today or yesterday to, to do did that. Did I do that? Yeah, you did. I got an email from you. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't think I, I got the email. I thought you did. Yeah. I'll double check. But I'll, I'll, yes, I'll, I've got it. No. It wasn't me. It might have been somebody else. No, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, is there any uh, questions from the public? Okay, so. Uh, oh, that was a different topic. I'm sorry. That was that was regarding the the. The the um, security. The security. Yeah, that's on my list I too. Wanted something. Mine was mine was about. The no, that was about the security, which yeah. I also have a note to post that tomorrow. But too. This, this now I know I'm not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm crazy. Uh, so the way uh, Monday night will go uh, is, as I just said, we'll uh, have an opportunity to to follow up on these uh, questions. Uh, the uh, if any. Uh, committee member has wants to make uh, or has proposals to make adjustments to the superintendent's budget uh, if you could give give me a heads up and the superintendent just so if there's any preparation that needs to be done it's not to draw value judgments on anything anyone wants to do it's just to be aware of it before mm -hmm. the meeting uh, the other thing uh, is along those same lines uh, is as Mr. Wise indicated, uh, you know, we could end up uh, seeing having to make a change to this budget. So full steam ahead with what you want to do, but just be mindful that 
you know, to use a, an accounting term, uh, last in, first out <laughs> type of thing. So if we start adding things, we may have to then uh, pull them out, back out. So, or ha at least have a discussion yep. about that. Uh, the, what else did I? And, you know, our goal is, our, our charge is to submit a balanced budget to the town manager. Uh, so, again, if someone has, wants to add things to the budget, there would have to be a corresponding uh, cut somewhere to do it. So, or, or, or a proposal of how to do it, whether it be free cash or, or something. Mm -hmm. So, does anyone have any questions? That was it. That is the uh, it. no other discussion. Is there um, any other mo motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Wow. Zero. People don't know what to do with their time now.